best equipped to answer this question. So it's, this question is for whoever may be able to take it up. I want to ask you about another revolving fund. It's the Pershing Hall in Paris. Pershing Hall was purchased and organized by a group of World War I veterans and American Legion members as a memorial and gathering place. Since then, it's been turned over to the VA. It's become dilapidated and renovated several times, and most recently leased to a hotel and then to a shoe store. Today, VA collects the rent and is allowed to spend a portion of it on receptions. According to the Legion members in Paris, it no longer serves any public purpose, and its collection of historical artifacts has been scattered. Are you aware of this situation, anybody? And do you think this revolving fund has mutated into a pure moneymaker and forgotten its original purpose? Well, first off, I just want to, um, for the record, we can provide you some expenses that make up why we need the reserve that's been there. Um, typically, for our franchise funds, sir, we keep um, one to three months of operating reserve on task. And, and again, there's some other expenses there, like you said, outside of salaries, and we're happy to provide and take that for the record. For the um, supply fund, there is about six months of operating reserves. And again, these, this is information that we can provide to you so that you can get a clearer picture. Now, in relation to Pershing Hall, um, that is not something that is under our purview today, but we're happy to take this for the record so that we can address your concerns. Um, you know, my main oversight is for the franchise fund and the supply fund, sir. Wonderful. So will you commit with us today then, Mr. Larkin, that you will get that information and set something up with the committee on Pershing Hall so we can find out exactly what is going on with that property? We will take that for the record, yes. Okay, sir. and going back to the reserve funds, again, the reserve funds, I, I truly understand when there's a, a need for, for an obligation, but there's not gonna be an obligation. If you have a four month operating cost, okay, there's not gonna be that large of an, a true obligation because you either have a customer that is having you service their account, so you have revenue in and revenue going out, and if that customer goes away, you're certainly not gonna have the obligation for that bill to be paid because that customer is no longer going to be creating that obligation, so you won't have that revenue. So the true obligation and reserves that are necessary for the organization is the salary for the employees. And to have four years of salary requirement in reserve, that is far too much money. So I yield if back. I can, if I can address that um, just real quickly and we'll, you know, well, again, we'll get you this information, but there are more expenses out there than just salary. Um, we actually have buildings, you know, that we are renting, and there's other overhead that we can definitely be able to explain to you further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosendale. And I just have a, a few more questions, so I'll yield, yield a, a few minutes to myself. Uh, Mr. Larkins, why does the VA publish the annual report for the franchise fund, but not for the supply fund? No, thank you for that question. Um, this is actually one of the questions that I asked when I first took this job in 2019. The Franchise Fund is more of an enterprise business entity, meaning we are actively selling services to not only VA, but to other government agencies, okay? The Supply Fund is strictly more so with services to VA, right? And so therefore, um, they don't necessarily, we don't necessarily put together a public-facing document that's, you know, put out there for everyone to view, but again, we have access um, we have this information, and anyone who desires it, we can get, give them access to that information. Right, thank you for that. And also for Mr. Larkins, if the committee had not held this hearing, then how would we have found out about the supply fund loss? It's a good question. Um, we do put this information out there in the audit reports. Um, I think this is a classic thing of, again, like if you ask, we give you the information, but you're right, there's probably other areas where we could provide information on a regular basis if it's required. Ms. Mata, can you provide an example in which a revolving fund violated the Anti-Deficiency Act? Uh, yes, uh, the Anti-Deficiency Act uh, requires agencies to have a system of funds control. Uh, in fiscal year 2023, the Department of Housing and Urban Development reported to us that they had counted the value of reimbursable agreements that they were anticipating getting and had obligated against those anticipated receipts before they received them. 
That violated the Anti-Deficiency Act's prohibition against obligations before you receive the amounts. And they that uh, violation is in GEO's compilation of ADA reports that we published in December. Okay, thank you. And then, Ms. Riffle, when was the last time that a VA revolving fund violated the Anti-Deficiency Act? Yeah, I actually am not aware. I'll defer to Mr. Larkins and see if he's aware. No, from my aware, we have not um, had an Anti-Deficiency Act within the VA revolving fund. And Mr. Mervan, do you, you don't have any other questions? I do not. Okay. Okay. Great. I think that's uh, that's all we have for today. So thank you all for being here today and for answering all of our questions. I ask you unanimous consent that all members shall have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include any extraneous material. Hearing no objection, so ordered. This hearing is now adjourned.